Hello folks, it is time for some more Hobby Nightmares. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Things are going well in your life and you had a good weekend and you're fully refreshed and energised for the week ahead. Let's jump in, shall we? First of all, if you like what I do, like the video. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to the YouTube algorithm as well. It means more people may see my videos and if you really like what I do, head over to the, to the Patreon down below. Maybe... Buy your pal North a pint. If you do, you can get access to all the videos I do up to two days early. That's right. And you get to message back and forth with yours truly whenever I get a chance to read through my mailbag over there. So there you go. Uh, Luke says, Hello North. Hope you and your family are doing well. We're doing well, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Luke. I'm 28 and I live in the land down under. And for the past year, I've been listening to your channel while I'm at work, and it makes my day that much more enjoyable. Hopefully you're not in your cubicle, or in a vehicle, or anywhere that's, uh, you know, not good for you to be listening to this right now, and you're not jumping through your seat now and reading your hobby nightmare. But, you know. I figured it was time I submit my own nightmare, but was wondering from the various stories I had to choose from which to start with. So I decided to start from the beginning. A little background on me and how I got into the hobby. Okay. I like these ones. I like context stories. This is good. Hmm. If you can hear the clink of ice, it's the weekend in my world. I got into this hobby after watching my dad play Dawn of War, and when he was away at work, I would sneak onto his computer and play myself. Loving the game since then. Dude, your dad knew what you were doing, because you can check the save game files. <laughs> His wife at the time, my stepmom, her brother, saw me play the game when he was visiting and asked, Oh, you like 40k then? To me, I had no idea what that meant. I was 11 and it was just Dawn of War. I told him, yes, it's cool. And he, with my parents' permission, took me to Games Workshop and my tiny mind was blown away. I had my first introduction game as Space Marines against the Orcs on the Assault of Black Reach box set. I instantly fell in love with the game. I was more buzzed than a child after his first sip of coke. My then uncle got me a white dwarf and read it over, and over showing my dad who was also interested in it as he enjoyed building and painting model planes and cars. How is your dad not into Warhammer if he does all that? So that weekend we went to the shop and I got the Black Reach box set and my dad got the Imperial Guard starter box for himself. We painted and learned the game and played with each other. Over the time, I got more into the lore and more knowledge of the factions and decided with my pocket money I earned and birthday and Christmas money, I started collecting Necrons back in 5th edition. I would regularly attend the local gaming club that my then uncle would take me to play and get games with and have fun. I understood my codex well and made a list going from 500 to 1000 points to 1500 points and then 2,000 point lists, and it acted as a shopping list for my army. This is where the nightmare starts though. Around, around the 1,500 point mark of my army, the local shop had a tournament. I decided to give it a go. Now being 12, I didn't expect much as I didn't have any of the more OP at the time units, like the monolith. The tournament was only 12, uh, 1,250 points. So, not that big of a deal. My army consisted mainly of warriors, scarab swarms, destroyers, a few to tomb spiders, a destroyer lord and a necron lord with a small pariah bodyguard unit with him. There were three rounds of this tournament. My first round was fine. I was against an ultramarines player. I lost, but again, I wasn't expecting to win. The second round was against a dark angels player. Specifically, a Deathwing player with his whole army being Terminators. He was about 35, maybe 40, and his army was very well painted. He looked at my list, and I remember very clearly he said, and I quote, No monolith, <laughs> no Nightbringer, <laughs> this is going to be easy. Unquote. I simply agreed with him and shrugged. Uh, probably. Dude. I... I just don't know, man. I don't know why are these people in the world? Why? Why? You're 35, 40. What is wrong with you? 
What is wrong with you? You are my age. You are my age. And you're playing a 12 year old. What you do, mate, is you look at your own list and go, oh, what can I drop to make this more fun for him? I don't care if you're at a tournament. Okay. This is where I, this is where the tournament stuff goes out the window for me. All right? I don't care if you're at a tournament and you're playing for blood. If you come across a 12-year-old boy, you take your OP list, you throw it out, and you play with something that he might win against. Call the TO over. And say, listen, man. Quietly, out the kid's earshot. Listen, man. The kid's 12. I want to make sure he has a good game. Do you mind if I, like... You know, use another list that's, like, not as competitive. You know? Or even, like, take half my army against his. And just tell it it's really powerful to give him a good experience. That's what you should do. Screw you on your tournament record. Alright? You're a moron. If, if you go into a tournament going, No, it's a tournament and I'm a, I must win and, and get my points and make sure that I'm at the top of the leaderboard so I can get this free box of models that don't mean anything. No. Dude, dude, play the game. That means if you come across a wide-eyed 12-year-old lad who loves painting models, you do your best to make sure he has a good time, and if you can, you do your best to make him win whilst you do it. That's what you do. That, as a good hobbyist, that's what you do. What you don't do is try and wipe him off the field because it's easy, an easy couple of points for you to add to your little tournament score. To make your foo-foos feel alright. You're an idiot if you do things like that. You're the worst kind of tournament player if you do things like that. The amount of tournament players that I know who literally go to a tournament and as soon as they see a kid, they go, right, where's my secondary list? Where's my fluffy list that I know I'm going to lose with but I always like playing with? I'll use that one, and I'll, and even then, I'll throw the game. I'll charge my, you know, I'll charge my my best things against the things I know they're going to die against. It's fine, right? I'll take the loss. It's okay. My whole life doesn't revolve. My whole sense of self worth doesn't revolve around whether I win with toy models or not. Get a grip. We started off. And we had three objectives to control and slay the Warlord and First Blood rules. He went first and moved his Dark Angels up the field, whilst he had one unit at the back holding his home objective. He shot a few of my Warriors down, but they came back in my turn. My Warriors were just as good as regular Marines, but just slower, so I moved everything up and shot my shots, killing a Terminator or two. Eventually, he was in charge range, and that's what he wanted. He came in and attacked... Uh, but not doing much, which was fine by me, as I had a second squad sat outside of combat range and, and secured the mid-objective as my destroyers do what their names suggest and laid waste to anything they shot at. He was clearly getting quite frustrated. I don't know if it was because his dice rolls were bad, because they were, or because he was losing to a 12-year-old, which he was. <laughs> this is not going the way I thought. This is not going the way I thought. Brilliant. I love this. After a few more turns, he did win. Ah! After a few more turns, he did win, as the Necrons had a rule that if you destroy 75% of the army, the Necrons automatically lose. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. Oh! Or something along those lines. It's been a while, but that's how I remember it. That sucks, man. So I lost, but it was a great game. I went to shake his hand, and he didn't shake it back. He said... Tournaments aren't for kids. And packed his minis and got ready for the final round. I was a little taken aback by this, but I just thought, oh well, one bad egg, I suppose. Dude, you had a really good head on your shoulders. Well done to you. This guy's a real piece of work. I want to say something more strenuous, but it's Monday, it's early, and I don't want to get demonetized. This guy is a real piece of work. North, this wasn't even the worst one of the day. Oh no, my third round opponent was something else. Oh no. Poor little soldier, man. Third round. I'm against a Chaos Space Marine player. He was younger, in his 20s. He had a Terminator Lord. Terminators, land, uh, Terminators, land Raiders, a bunch of Marines and tanks. I was a little suspicious of the size of his army, but I had no idea about Chaos Points, so I, never I had never faced him before. 
But I thought they were just spiky space marines, so it should be very similar. Mm, pretty much. Pretty much. We set up and I shit you not, he deploys his land raider on top of a terrain building. I say, you can't deploy that there, it's a tank. He argued with me every inch of the way to which reason why he would, what, well, every which reason why he could and I got a moderator over and, and he said, no, actually, you can't. So we begrudgingly removed it. Dude, again, 12 year old. 12 year old. Come on. Uh, okay, we have a Dawn of War deployment, so we couldn't shoot first turn, which was fine for me, more or less, as I could move my warriors up and get into position. He, however, moved again and began to declare targets. I told him it was night fighting, but he told me that, and I quote, uh, Chaos can see in the dark. I asked for him to show me the rule and he refused, stating, I know my codex, I've been playing for years, trust me. Being 12, ignorant and not wanting to be a pain, I just took him at his word. Yeah, I, I'm not going to have a go at you, mate, you're 12. I'm not going to have a go at you. You know, if you're 18 or above, then I would have a go at you here. I'd be like, mate, you deserve to be cheated on. You deserve to literally have this guy cheat and ruin your day because you're not standing up to him, you know. He would always roll out of my view, move further than normal, even when I called him out in it, telling me that they could due to a rule that he wouldn't let me see. I know now I should have just walked away, but regardless of all of his cheating, I was winning by a wide margin. <laughs> so I don't, I didn't want to back out now. At the end of the game, I won by a close uh, by a close amount, but he wasn't happy about it. Dude, no wonder he's cheated against a 12-year-old and lost. Necrons are broken, and, uh, he said as he packed up. Oh my god. At the end of the game, we were to keep our best painted mini out for the best painted competition. I knew my painting was as good as one could get for silver skeletons, but I picked my Necron Lord anyway and placed it on the table. I went to the bathroom quickly as the judges went around and people packed up their stuff and the terrain and play tables. When I got back, the organizers asked me, uh, what did you do? Confused, I asked what they meant and they showed that my Necron Lord was super glued to the table by the base. I was freaking out as I didn't want to break it, but also they thought I did it for some reason. What the hell? It wasn't until the Ultramarines player from my first round told me that the Chaos player was seen with it and had placed it on the table. He thought he was just looking at the minis and, and, and had chosen to be best painted. Wow. When confronted, he said, it was just a prank, relax. But removing my mini from the table damaged it because it was part of the building we were in, renting for the tournament, and the organizer got fined to replace it. He was banned from the group and all tournaments held by them, but I never even got an apology from them either for accusing me. After that, neither me nor my uncle went there again. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. They're probably panicking when they accused you, man. They're probably panicking a little bit. Don't take it to heart, dude. Don't take it to heart. Um, I can't believe that. I, I, it's just... And I, I, I love the hobby, dude. Like, I really do. I, I think it's the greatest hobby in the world. And, you know, but there are some times when... Obviously, I'm exposed to more idiots than most people are. One, because I'm around the hobby a lot. And number two, I run a, I run a, I run a show called Hobby Nightmares, you know? Go figure. Um, but there are some days and some, shall we say, stories that we get where I'm just like... Dude, do we really harbour these people? Do we really harbour these Cretans? These type of people? I just... Nah, man. Come on. Hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, and if you enjoyed it, and if you wish for more stories, I'd be happy to send some. Yeah, please do, man. Please do. Um, we played together a few more times until I had to move. New town, new players, new highs, and new nightmares. Keep doing what you're doing. Have a good one, Luke. Cheers, man. Uh, Joe says, and yes, do send more in, mate. That'd be good. Uh, Joe says, hello, North. You can call me Joe, all right? 
I'm writing to you today from a mobile phone on my lunch break. Oh god, here we go. All hickledy pickledy. If the alignment of paragraphs and breaks is odd on your end, that would be why. I started getting into Warhammer 40k when I was around 19 years old, and I'm currently approaching my 25th birthday. Well, congratulations to you, sir. Um, happy quarter of a century. The story I want to tell you is about a recent experience I had at my local game store. In all of the years I've been collecting, painting and consuming lore, it has been difficult for me to get finished with my 40k army. I'm a Grey Knight player like yourself, ha huh? man of culture. Some of that time lost and procrastination is due to me being distracted, but most of the reason it's self-inflicted in another way. I got married at 20. Ooh, that's young. That's young. Had my first baby at 22. And I am days away from having my second child. Oh, doof. All of these things are amazing and I'm grateful for my family every day. Dude, you're good. All right, good. But this makes my hobby time a bit, a bit difficult. We are a single income family, so money is almost always tight. And when it isn't, I'm never home or have time to paint. Yeah, I can see that, dude. I work in blue collar fields for years, just recently getting a desk job and having the thing I coveted most of my, in my adult life, uh, a 40 hour work week. I am not too sure how blue collar careers are over there, but for the first six months of my wife's first pregnancy, I was working 98 hours a week and only had one half day off to go to her 20 week appointment. Wow, dude. I was working three hours away from home too. The years I followed, I was working on an average of 60 to 70 hours a week to sometimes 84 hours a week with a day off every two weeks. My, my commute was never less than an hour's drive away. Wow, man. Like, so a 40 hour week to you is like a holiday, right? <laughs> like literally. Your 40 hour week to you is just chill. Chill time. Well, good on you, man. You should never have to work that hard, dude. Jesus. As you can probably guess, with a work schedule like that and a family, it's been quite difficult to get to play in the games that I love. Since I've recently attained more free time than I could ever have imagined, I have been hobbying more than ever. One of the big hurdles for me was committing to buy the rulebook. With $40 to $60 purchases being a big deal for my household, I almost always decided to get more models instead of the rules. I had some old games lying around and I went to trade them in for, for hobby cash as I haven't had much extra cash since starting my new job. I decided to bite the bullet and buy the 10th edition rules and begin playing with my local community. Okay, well dude, you didn't have to buy the 10th edition rules. They're free. I hate to tell you, um, but yeah, if you've got an internet connection, they're free. But the base rules, anyway. The basis of the base rules are free. Um, unless I'm, I'm mistaken. I've been playing OPR for about a year now, so... I don't know if they still are. They were when I when I left, though. When I went into the store, I, I had told myself, if they have the rules, I'm going to get them. If they don't, I'm getting a strike squad. I went in and began my search. No luck. I grabbed my strike squad and headed to the front desk. I asked the worker to see if they had any hidden around the shop that weren't out on the front. He told me he would have a look and walked me around the store. No luck yet again. He then said, oh, wait. I actually do have a book that we haven't been able to get rid of yet because of all the players already have 10th edition. He hurried into their snack room and found a copy of 10th that came out with a Leviathan box set and handed it to me. Uh, keep it, it's yours now, he said. I was shocked and thought I misunderstood. I asked him what I owed him for it to make certain, but he told me to go ahead and keep it. I was a giddy mess. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. That's brilliant. Because at the end of the day, you can give away one of these rule books that don't mean anything. They're not worth anything. Especially if you've got it from a Leviathan box set. You can't sell it separately, really. So just get, yeah. If you don't need it, off it goes, man. You, that, that worker's a good worker. He's made your day and he's got a customer for life. If I was running this store and we didn't need that book, I would probably say, listen, man, um, in future, just text me and ask me. I will always have my phone on. Call me and ask me. And I will always say yes. Just don't, just in case you give something away that I'm saving for somebody else. But apart from that, mate, yes. You know what I mean? I was a giddy mess as I walked back to the register to buy my strike squad and some chips for my daughter. 
My wife and daughter had accompanied me on this trip. He gave my daughter the chips for free, and I paid for my models and left. I know this is a bit different than most, than most nightmares, as it isn't really a nightmare, but I thought I'd share it anyway. I was seriously considering going to Amazon and saving myself 10 bucks on the book, but I wanted to support my local game store, and since I am frequently there, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been blessed with the gift that I got. So as a reminder, always support your local game store if you can. The good ones always do so much for the community if they can help it. Since you are a Grey Knights player, I thought you'd maybe like to see the Dread Knight I finished up last night. I'm not the best painter, and I've only painted maybe 30 models total in my time. I too like to finish about one model, a, a, a one full model a night. This took me about two and a half nights. Hope you like it, and give me some tips. Power swords are a nightmare for me, so I've been painting them gun metal grey. Thanks for taking the time to read it if you have. Okay. Let's have a wee look-see here, shall we? There's something really cool about seeing the exiled blade in the background actually taking the tyranny to the task. Bloody awesome, man. Um, let's have a little look-see. There we are. Oh, that zoomed in. Far too zoomed in. Let me. Oh, there we go. Oh my god, dude! You're killing me here. There we go. Well, that's for thirty models, man. That's a good base. I like the base. Nicely dry brushed. Well done. Let's look at the rest. Nicely dry brushed, though. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay, inks. Inks, my friend. Inks are your best friend. So what you need to do with this model, right? Get some Seraphim Sepia and uh, lightly daub over the gold bits. Seraphim Sepia and lightly daub over the gold bits. Then I want you to get some Norn Oil and liberally go over the night itself. Really dull down the recesses, at least. Get those recesses dulled down, right? Maybe even go over the entire thing. Then... Once that's dried, give it a light, a light dry brush, just like you did on the base, of either Liberator Gold or Necron Compound. So all of the silver needs to be dulled down with Norn Oil, right? And a bit of water. Wait for that to dry. Don't let it pool. Wait for it to dry. Then lightly dry brush Liberator Gold or some Necron Compound. That will give you a very cool looking, shiny silver model with recesses as well it'll look 10 times better but even now mate even now it looks good so seraphim sepia in the gold let it dry and then ink norn oil over the silver and then lightly dry brush when it's dry make sure it doesn't pull lightly dry brush with necron compound or liberator gold as you wish that's what i would do on that uh, leave the sword as it is man sword's fine don't worry about it um, literally don't worry about it. Don't worry about painting, feathering, and things like that. Do one technique at a time. Get the model looking cool, and then come back another time, and we'll look into uh, getting the rest of it sorted out. Right. Next. In is Bernard, or Bernard. And he says, Hey North, I got pretty hooked on 40k lore a few months ago. And at the start of the month, I finally got a decent break from work and study, so I thought I'd get into the painting side of the hobby. I popped down to my local Warhammer shop. I was a first-time buyer. I didn't know what else to do. And picked up the Grey Knights Combat Patrol and paints to go with it. I had a blast assembling the Strike Squad, Terminator's Librarian, and my beloved baby carrier, then figuring out painting te techniques on the Strike Squad, uh, pl playing on the bigger canvas with the Dread Knight, then finally applying what I'd figured out, on the squad that actually matters, the Terminators. Most of the time with your channel on in the background. Good, you're a man of culture. I doff my cap to you, sir, for picking an army that is uh, strictly for the chads. I'd taken my time and gotten a result I was pretty happy with, except for the force weapons. I still need a bit of practice with blending ratios, but I wasn't too fussed. Here's where my hobby bad dream starts, featuring myself, my Terminator just a car, and yourself, North. What did I do? What did I do? 
I thought to make my Justicar stand out a bit more from the squad and just for a bit of fun, I'd paint his four sword green. I'll come up with a law reason for that at some point. I'd done a reasonable job on the blade. It was a bit tedious, but I was happy with it and moved on to the hilt. I was happily but carefully applying a coat of Retributa armor to the hilt when one of your episodes of you, Northern Exile, took a sip of your vodka Pepsi and let out a groan of pleasure that I reckon <laughs> that I reckon up until that point only your missus has ever heard, then said vodka. The unexpectedness of it made me involuntarily laugh pretty hard, just as I'd made brush contact to my model and a momentary loss of control led to, the, to a nice blotch of Retributor armor at the base of, oh no, at the base of my pain in the arse the paint sword blade. And now, whenever I see it, I can just hear a northern Englishman a little bit too satisfied with his vodka. Oh man. <laughs> if anyone's curious, the sound cliff in reference is at exactly 19 minutes into the video posted to YouTube on September the 9th. Pictures attached of the blunder and my boys from Titan. Cheers, North. Have a good one. Bernie. Oh, man. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no. I'm going to have to put your, put your models up now. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, where am I? There we go. There it is. Dude. You, you're new? You serious? Fuck off. <laughs> oh, that's really annoying. That's really annoying. These are really good, man. Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, was it was it Luke last time? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Who, who, who was our last? Um, who was our last? Oh, Joe. Joe. Uh, see the lead Terminators there? That's the kind of look you get. When you dull it down with a with a null oil and you, you you build it back up again, looks cool, huh? Really nice models. Do love Grey Knights, man. I just wish they had Primaris, you know. That's why I converted mine to be Primaris, or Primaris sized anyway. Dude, look at the base. Look at the base. That's not fair. Excellent stuff. What do we have here? The blunder. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> are you going to keep it like that? Or are you, you going to leave it as it is? No, oh, no, are you going to change it? Sorry. Right, you're going to keep it like that. Let me know. Let me know. Looks nice, though. I can see it in the middle there. That's only a tiny bit, man. You should be all right. It's only a tiny bit. I mean, it does look pretty funny. Keep it on there. Keep it on there as a memento. As a memento of the time spent. I'll be fine. Dude, if you're worried, if you're saying that's a massive mistake, you're going to be an amazing painter. I'm just, I'm just saying... <laughs> I'm just saying. Especially if you're new. I mean, my God. I know people who really love Grey Knights. You can't get them to look this good. So, well done. Well, well done. Anyway. That's me for today. I'll be back tomorrow with a 40k rant. It is why I hate Space Wolves. Now. That's going to be an essay in and of itself. So. Please support the channel. Please help me through this difficult time when I tell you about the hatred I have for Space Wolves. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And Space Wolves, people, please don't get too triggered by the video tomorrow. Love you a long time. Speak to you then. Have a good one. Bye now.